Hey, everybody. Welcome back to our podcast where we agree to disagree on a lot of different things. Before we get started. Oh, really? <laughs> well, Mello oh. <laughs> just always has to be somehow in the camera. She, she just, knows. She knows. As soon as we get the podcast stuff ready, she gets ready so she can be in view. <laughs> it's kind of cute. Hey, get out of here, Mello. Anyway, today we're going to be talking about siblings, right? Yes, so today's topic is sibling relationships and what that looks like, and I imagine we'll probably end up agreeing. Um, I don't know, why don't you start? Talk about how many siblings you have, their ages, what I they're like. I don't even know their ages. <laughs> you, okay, well, so, their approximate ages. Yeah, so I have an older brother. Well, you have to explain. You're like the baby baby of yeah. your family by a lot, so it's okay you don't know their ages. So I, I feel like, have I mentioned it before? I don't know. I technically have a half sister. So before my mom got married, did I talk about this before once on the podcast? I don't know. I can't remember either. I feel like I have, but I don't remember. I don't really need to go into detail, but my mom was married before she met my dad to like her high school sweetheart. I don't know, whatever. Anyway, um, they were going through like a divorce at the time. Um, they had a child, Misty. I think she was like three, about three. And my mom dropped her off at her dad's. And he was an alcoholic. And I mean, they think, I mean, I, I, don't, I don't know if he was drunk or what happened or this or that. But he took her on a motorcycle. He crashed. He hit a tree. She hit a mailbox. And it pretty much took off like half her head and she died which is really sad so I have a half sister that I've never met before and anyway um so yeah so I have a half sister really sad Uh, my mom went through that really young which is terrible Um, but then my mom met my dad and then had us four kids so I have a brother two older sisters we're like so I'm 26, right? Don't ask me. <laughs> I can't what? remember anything. Yes, I'm you're 26. 26. And then, like, it goes, like, we're literally, like, four or five years apart. So it's, like, 5, 10, 15, around that area of my siblings, how we range. So Katie's probably, like, 30. Chelsea's 34. I feel like she's younger No, she's than that. 35, 35 or 36. I think oh. she's 36 now. And then Katie's Jeremy's... 31, I think. Jeremy's 40. Something like that. So, okay. <laughs> My brother has... Him and his wife have six kids, three, three boys, three girls. Then it goes... My sister Chelsea and her husband, and they have boy, girl, girl, boy. Then I have my sister Katie... And she has a girl and a boy. And then there's me now having a girl. So that is the tiebreaker here. So that's six boys, six girls. Now it will be seven girls. You mean like for the grandkids? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's kind of fun. So this makes number 13. And yeah, that's my siblings. We'll get more into details, but I guess your turn. So my older sister... Maddie is 27. Mm -hmm. She's a year older than me. Yeah. She's 27. I'm almost 26. She's a year and a half older than me. And then my younger sister, Ariel, she is 24. She just turned 24 in April. And then my younger brother, Ben, or my only brother, but my youngest sibling ben is 22 well no he's 21 he turns 22 in august okay because my mom was actually telling me this odd years so 2023 we all have even at least i think that's what it is even numbered ages so 22 24 26 and then yeah maddie will be 28 by the end of the year Hmm. i think Yes. Well, okay. We should probably know our siblings better than we do, but that's okay. Hey, at least I know their ages. It's hard. It just, and every names. year it gets harder and harder. Yeah, I know. Yep. So we both have three siblings. Um, 
And I think we've talked about this, but we only want three kids. So if we both come from families of four, how can we only want three kids? You first. I always used to kind of want four. I feel like I've always wanted like to copy my sister, Chelsea, because I look up to her a lot and I want to be like her. Well, I used to want to be like her. I mean, not that I don't want to be like her, but just growing up and stuff. So when she had four kids, I'm like, I'm going to have four kids or maybe five. And then it pretty much was kind of four. And now just, I know like we're not old, but just kind of starting a little later in life. Like I don't, I want to be done having kids by like 35. So I think like with the spacing of time and stuff, I think three kids sounds good. I think it's like a good number. Not too many, not too little. Jonas says if we don't get a boy after three, we're going to try again. (laughs) See if we can get a boy in there on the floor. We'll just, we'll just so keep we'll going. S- we'll see. I don't know. That just seems hard. Anyway, that's why we want three, right? Yeah. Or, well, I, I mean, don't know. I just think yeah. And good. as far as as far as kids go, I think it's I think you need to have siblings. I feel really bad for people that don't have siblings. I know. Me and too. I feel like you need to have more than one sibling. And so that's why we kind of that's at least for me. Yeah. I feel like three is a good yeah, number. I yeah. One or two, yeah, you need more. So experts say that around 80% of Americans have at least one sibling. So that's nearly 8 in 10 people being raised with a sibling. Uh, siblings know, are I cool like because... I don't know that many people that just are an only child. Yeah, know? I knew a few uh, in from California when I grew up. I mean, like, I know a few, but I just feel like... But the I feel like the culture in Utah and Arizona is a lot more, like, have a lot of kids, mm-hmm. more so than California. According to a researcher at Penn State University, people who have close sibling relationships have better mental health, better mm. psychological health, and better social relationships, generally speaking. Which makes sense because I feel like siblings are just kind of like built in friends growing up. And so, from as soon as you can think, you know, move or interact, you have friends there that you can communicate with you can talk to play with right and I think just having a big family is fun in general like when you do family things like you know like when we go over to your house it's like fun to have all the siblings over like when we go visit my family and all the siblings and the grandkids it's just like like it's a lot more fun than if you just were by yourself or had like one sibling you know that's true especially for extended family because my dad has nine siblings and my mom has six and so growing up like extended family get-togethers were always just huge and it was always really exciting because there's a lot of people so I don't even know what it'd be like to only have you know like a handful of cousins (laughs) yeah it's a lot research also confirms that if siblings have hostile or conflicted relationships when young it can increase their risks of suffering anxiety later in life which makes sense midlife and older adults rated their sibling relationships as warmer less conflicted and less affected by parental favoritism than younger adults which makes a lot of sense because I remember growing up, my brother and I, whenever we got in an argument, we used to mm-hmm. always think that mm-hmm. my mom would be on the other one's side. But looking back, I mean, it's pretty easy to tell that she was just trying to do, you know, the best that she could. But in the moment when we're kids, you know, we think like, oh, you're the favorite, mm-hmm. right? Or, oh, you're the favorite. Or you get special treatment. So. Except for me, I definitely got special <laughs> treatment. <laughs> yeah, except <laughs> Michaela definitely did get special treatment and everyone knew it. Still knows it. Yeah. It's probably, you Sad. probably still do get special treatment. Yeah. I was the baby. I was the accident baby. My mom had me and she was 40. And I was born dead, which is crazy, too. It's kind of like a miracle baby, but. You know what I found out? You know what Maddie told me yesterday? What? Only, so Maddie and Ben were not planned. Ariel and I were. So my parents, two yeah, middle two middle kids. Really? I didn't know that. The two middle kids were planned, but the oldest and youngest weren't. I didn't know that. How'd you know Remember that? Remember your mom? She was really shocked when she got pregnant with Maddie. It like, wasn't planned. I knew that one. I knew the first one. Yeah, and then she had you two, and then like your dad wanted more kids, but like I don't think she, your mom really knew if she was really going to have another one or not because her pregnancies were hard and stuff. And so like I've heard her talk about that before. Anyway. Later in life, sister-sister siblings seem to have the closest relationships, spend the most time together, and support each other the most when compared to other sibling pairs. Like, like bat, like 
sister sister like growing up like no later in life oh sisters oh seem to have the closest relationships so more so mm-hmm. than brothers or like brother sister mm-hmm. it's true yeah that makes sense i can see that because i feel like your two sisters kind of always have had a relationship you and ben it took a long time to get there well we've always been friends we just didn't get along a lot growing up but i i feel like I feel like it's an easier thing for girls. Girls in general, I feel like, are a little more social. Like, mm-hmm. I have a lot of friends that I just never really talk to, you know. And, like, sometimes I don't really talk to Ben. I don't know. You're always talking. That's my point. <laughs> you like, know. You're I, always on the phone with your sister. So, that makes sense. Um, okay. Are you glad you grew up with siblings? And how is your relationship with them? I'm glad I grew up with siblings, but for me, though, it was kind of tough because at such a young age, I was kind of on my own because <laughs> we were, my mom had a hard time getting pregnant, so we were super spread apart, and I became like an aunt at like 12 or 13 years old, and so I was kind of like the only child for a long time growing up because they all like were older and moved out of the house and started life, and I was still at home, and then I feel like I was stuck at home for even longer because... After high school, I deferred my freshman year of college to train for 2016, and then I even came back and lived at home for six months when I first came back to train for 2020. So I just feel, I don't know, at such a young age, I was by myself a lot, which kind of was a bummer. I don't know, just like, it was weird being the only child, especially like growing up and going to high school. Like, I feel like my other siblings kind of like, were all going through like school together, you know, and like, Mm -hmm. and then I was just like, at home by myself I'm like this is boring you know and it was weird being so young having to like go see my siblings with their kids you I don't know it was just different just not like what I remember when I was younger you know and like all the fighting (laughs) (laughs) my sisters hating each other because my sister Katie my sister Katie's kind of like the devil child of the family she's crazy and she like, would steal Chelsea's clothes all the time, and Chelsea would have to put a lock on her door, and somehow she would still steal her, steal her clothes, and then Chelsea would, like, find her clothes, like, in my closet, and she would say, Michaela took them. I'm like, I don't even fit in her clothes, and then she would, like, hide them in the garage and, like, different areas, and then one of our cats would spray, and, like, the closet, I feel like, would always stink. I don't know. I can't, I don't remember all the full stories, because I was pretty young, but Gross. I just remember Chelsea and Katie fighting all the time, because... Katie would always break into her room and take stuff, which is, I feel like, normal sister stuff. And then me and my sister hated each other because me and Katie, me and Chelsea always got along. Like, I just don't know if it's that, like, 10-year gap, you know, that we had. And Chelsea would always do my hair and makeup for gymnastics meets. And, like, you know, when I was younger, they'd always, my sister would flip me around and teach me gymnastics and do all the things, like, I don't know. My sister just loved me. Katie did not love me. (laughs) I'd always want to play like my sister, Katie used to want to be a veterinarian and she loves animals and she'd always bring home wild cats and animals into the house. My parents like, what are you doing? (laughs) And so anyway, she would like, they'd play vet like when her and her friend came over and there's so many times I like wanted to play with your, you know, you want to play with your older sister and like Katie just, she hated me. With, like, a passion. She would never let me play with her, play with her friends, which is typical. That's sad. And then I remember one day, I don't remember how old I was, but we were, I was wanting to play with her and her friend, and my parents weren't home. My sister got really mad at me, so she choked me up against the wall. Jeez. And I got <laughs> mad. And I grabbed a butter knife, and I chased around the house with it, and apparently I kind of cut her with the knife. <laughs> kind of vicious, uh, <laughs> I know. How old were you? I don't know. I think I was like in elementary school. She was mean. Okay. I had to just defend myself. So I got to get her back. Anyway, siblings are fun. Good times. My brother, I feel like when I was younger, would just squish us in between the bed and the wall and suffocate us and torture (laughs) us and play with us a lot. And I don't know, but I've always had like a decent relationship with my brother He's just so much older, but, like, every time I see them or we go and visit their kids and the family, like, it's, like, we have so much fun. My brother's always, like, we need to talk more, and 
this and that and it's like every time we do talk we have such a good time and have a really good relationship but I don't know I'm really grateful for siblings did you pick on your siblings a lot like your sisters or was it just Ben so my brother and I growing up we were all the time we were either best friends or worst enemies and so we did a lot of stuff together but it also wouldn't take much for us to hate each other's guts and start fighting and that was kind of like that happened pretty much until I started college that's like bad. I it was I mean <laughs> I just it like it came and went you know like sometimes it was worse than others for the most part we got along because you know we'd we'd always hang out we'd do stuff together um but yeah we'd we'd have a lot of arguments and we'd get mad at each other i probably i was probably pestering him the most cuz sometimes i'd bug him and push his buttons you still do even <laughs> so though you guys get along better say, yeah and then i don't know i've just never been as close with my sisters just cuz we don't have as much in common i feel like it's kind of changed as we've gotten older and it's fun to which I feel like is the best part is you get older you get married you guys start having kids I don't know there's just like more to relate to and like you guys go hiking yeah well you guys can go skiing now to get, like it's kind of fun like you yeah guys none are of my finding, siblings like, are married interests. like yours but yeah but, but yeah there's other stuff that I can do now whereas like growing up I didn't really have a whole lot in common with my sisters there wasn't a whole lot we could do but now three of the four of us we ski or snowboard we're trying to get Ariel to go so all four of us can go but so Ben and Maddie and I went a few times. Um, I did it one time, and Jonas was so excited because <laughs> Jonas went. Like, after I went, I think Jonas was like, well, I want to go now, even though, like, we've never really had the desire to do, like, snow sports. I had already been before you went. I know, but, like, it's been, it had been a long time. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I mean, I was planning on coming back, but I remember I couldn't because I had, like, a conference the yeah, day you went. Yeah, but my brother-in-law makes fun of Jonas <laughs> all the time because – my sister and her husband and her kids will come up every year to Utah and they do like a whole like skiing, snowboarding trip. And every time they're up here, they always invite us to go. And I've always been too big of a chicken and it's expensive. And I'm like, eh, I'm fine. I don't like the cold, whatever. And they'll even, like Justin's even asked for Jonas to come because Jonas has done it before. And Jonas still like, well, eh, we're good. You know, whatever. We'll just go get dinner and hang out with them, whatever. And then it was like my coach Bob comes up to Utah. I finally go for the first time. He teaches me how to snowboard. And it was funny because I was pregnant. Didn't even know I was pregnant. And then I like, I enjoyed it. Like, I mean, I was super sore. But like, I learned pretty quick. I was doing it. Jonas was really excited. And then he kind of was like starting to go. And he was super excited because you're like, yay, like, we can go, like, skiing and snowboarding now, blah, 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 you know. And I was telling my sister because they were excited because they're like, oh, <laughs> so now you guys are going to go, you know. And now Jonas loves it and Jonas goes all the time, but he would never go with us, you know. So it's just kind of funny because, I mean, now you'll be able to go with them. But yeah, I it's it was sad for me because I just finally started doing it. And then I got pregnant. So then I couldn't really do it the rest know, of the you went one time rest of the season with you guys and then all his siblings started doing it except for Ariel but anyway hopefully one day we'll have the whole the whole gang going but yeah when you're once you're recovered from pregnancy and given birth and whatnot yeah I get package shape I don't know if I want to go till I got muscles <laughs> again <laughs> my legs are pretty weak what qualities do you think you've learned from having siblings patience I mean I think a lot to like being the youngest sibling you get to sit and watch all the mistakes your other siblings make too which is kind of cool so like that makes sense I could see like what I wanted in a relationship or what I wanted in a family or what I wanted to have or what I kind of wanted my future to be like in a way because they kind of I don't know what I'm trying to say no I know <laughs> what you mean but they like you would watch and learn from them I'd watch and learn and kind of had you know like they're like kind of like my role models you know like my sister Katie um I've kind of mentioned before she's a heroin addict and um she's kind of kind of like I said she's always kind of been the devil child in the family 
didn't really like to listen or obey and like dropped out of high school and just hung out with the wrong people and had the wrong boyfriends. And then she kind of seemed like she was getting her life together and moves to Utah and was going to um, get her GED, right? I don't know. Is that what it's called? When you drop out of high school, you oh, get yeah. your GED? Yeah. So anyway, she didn't end up doing that, but she finally did when she was in jail at one point in time. She finally got her GED, which was cool, but she was going to come up here, get her GED, I think try to go to like UVU or something. I don't know. She just wanted to like change the scenery, get out of the house, you know, whatever. And then she like was dating this really good guy. And then she met this other guy and ended up marrying him. And he kind of was a psychopath, bipolar and abusive. And they got on heroin and she, he ended up getting custody of her daughter. Anyway, it's like a whole long story. It's really sad. Because my sister was doing You're really good. You're pulling out all the sad stories on this episode. I know. Well, I think, you know, it's kind of, people probably want to, I mean, I feel like I've mentioned my sister's a heroin addict, but we haven't, like, I haven't really, like, said anything. Um, not that, like, I'm scared to say anything. I just feel like I haven't really had time to, like, talk about it. Um, anyway, so she, he got custody, which is really sad because then the whole year, that they were going through their issues. She was doing better. She was off drugs. She was doing everything she could to get custody of Blakely. And then at court, he got custody and he ended up getting remarried and has like some other kids, but like, we can't see her till she's 18, which is like really sad. We can't be a part of her life, which I think is dumb because he's still super bipolar and super crazy. And I think his new wife isn't even with him anymore and took the kids cause he's messed up and has a lot of problems and it's sad that he got custody and then my sister ended up relapsing and was back on drugs again and then she ended up meeting somebody else they dated she got pregnant and like she was good for like certain periods of time and then got back on drugs again and he was smart to be like hey like I'm taking Grayson and I'm gonna take care of him you do your thing and if you want to be better and get better then you can be a part of his life Um, and since then she just has not seemed to figure it out, which is really sad because my parents have spent so much time and money to help her. And honestly, it just comes down to just loving her as much as you can and hoping that she'll one day figure it out and get better. So she's actually in jail right now. And my sister Katie and I have never really had a close relationship. When she was in jail one time, she wrote a letter to my mom because that was like something they made him do for like rehab and you know all this stuff and I don't know exactly what was on it but she basically like kind of hated my mom because her and my mom were really close and then when I was born she kind of you know said it was all about me and like everything's about Michaela and she's the favorite child and I guess it just really like hurt her that's kind of how it started I guess I don't know so like kind of made me feel bad as a sibling because like I mean, yeah, I'm, like, spoiled (laughs) and stuff, you know, but I just never, like, felt, I don't know, I never felt like that would ruin it for her, but I guess it did, and I was really good at gymnastics, and she wanted to go to the better better gym, and my mom didn't have, you know, my parents didn't have, my parents' mate were well off, but gymnastics is expensive, and she wasn't that good at it, and so she had to stay at our family friend gym, because she got it for free, Um, Because my mom worked at the front office there. And so then I switched to Desert Lights. And Katie really wanted to go there because she wanted to get better. But we all kind of knew she wasn't, which is sad to say, but we all kind of knew, like, she wasn't really going to go anywhere with gymnastics. And she, like, kept trying to come back being, like, way older when she would quit from periods of time. So it was just, like, never really going to happen. So it is kind of sad because I feel like I got the better end of the stick. Like, my parents put more time into me with, like, gymnastics than her. Um, so anyway, she's always like resented me because of that, but like we've still, even though like when she, cause she's been here up here in Utah. And so when I came here for school, like I saw her a couple times when she was with her ex-boyfriend and Grayson and stuff. And, um, then when she was homeless from times I had her come over and I let her do laundry, which was kind of rough cause her stuff was <laughs> really stinky. And I was like, I don't think I could let her do this again because my washer and dryer, I feel like, smelled so bad. But I let her shower and do her laundry. And I've taken her out to eat a couple times. And then um, since she's been in jail previously, 
she's actually called me a bunch from jail and we've kind of built like have built a relationship which is really cool and if my mom and my sister come up here when she was homeless we would go see her and meet up with her and go to Walmart and just buy her some essentials and different things so like we try to help out from time to time but it's just really hard because she's always getting stuff stolen off her back she's had all these crazy things happen to her she's almost died like three different times and somehow hasn't so I feel like She's meant to be here. God has a purpose for her. And so I'm just really hoping that she figures it out. Anyway, I don't want to like rant. So I'm kind of just trying to pick little pieces, but it's really, it's just really sad. So she doesn't have either of her kids right now. We did finally go get to go see Grayson. Um, when my mom and sister came up and my dad for graduation in the gender reveal. And he's what? Not six. Six. He's six. Six or seven, I think. Yeah. So we, the last time I saw him, he was a baby baby, which is kind of sad. They they live up here. But anyway, we finally got to go see him, which is really cool. He's really cute. Little toe head. And that was fun. So hopefully we get to be in his life a little bit more. I don't know. It's just like really sad to see your sibling like live like that. And like, she always talks about how... It's an addiction. My body just wants it, wants it, wants it. Like, I just, I can't live without it. You don't understand. But I'm like, there's people that get out of the addiction world. And yes, it's hard because most of the time they end up relapsing and then dying and all these things. But like, you do see people recover from it. They get through it and can like move on with their life. And so I'm really hoping my sister can like figure that out. But it's just like, she's just kind of so far gone at this point. It's just really sad. So, like, I don't know if she will come out of it. Hopefully she does. Um, When she's in jail, she seems somewhat more normal because she's off the drugs and she's doing really good. But then she gets back out and doesn't have anywhere to go, doesn't have money, and just is so depressed with life. And it's going to be hard. You know, I always try to tell her, you know, like, I went through really hard situations, nothing like drugs, but... I had to work really hard to get there and you just got to work really hard to get back on your feet and like figure it out. It's going to be hard and it's going to suck. But once you do it, you're going to be so much happier anyway, whatever. So I just really hope that she figures that out with her life. Cause it's just really sad. I don't know. It's sad to have a sibling like that. She's just so addicted. She can't, she thinks she can't let it go. And it's all a mind thing, even though she's like, it's not a mind thing. I'm like, it is. You just got to, gotta change it but so we're all praying and hoping that day comes anyway that's my sister katie it's really sad but we're getting a relationship so we're on the up and up that's true you've been talking to her a lot lately yeah it's been good too and she's been really nice and supportive and she's like i'm gonna get out of here and i want to be part of you know your baby's life and i want to be an auntie and she's -hmm. been really supportive of me like having a baby which like sometimes i feel bad because you know, her life's kind of fallen apart and she doesn't really get to have her kids in her life. And it's been really hard on her because she loves them so much, but she just is a mess. So anyway, hopefully she will get to be a part of our kids' lives. That'd be fun. So you mentioned you were obviously the favorite growing up. Do you feel like your parents ever put pressure on you that they didn't put on the other siblings? No. No. (laughs) <laughs> well, that's good. <laughs> Do you no. feel like there ever was pressure on you from your siblings or your parents? Like, from your siblings, like, hey, you're getting all this special treatment. You better, you know, like, you better live up to I it. I mean, or- no. I mean, obviously, it was like, it would be like a teasing thing. But, like, if anything, my siblings were just so supportive. And especially with, like, gymnastics and stuff, they knew how hard it was. And all I've ever really had from them is, like, support. I mean, I think they would get frustrated that my parents had to spend so much time with me to like help me get where I am. Cause like, again, I have 12 nieces and nephews. So there's a lot of times even my mom couldn't go to stuff cause she had to be with me. And then like my dad traveled for work all the time. And so it, I think for them it was kind of hard, but I don't feel like, no, I don't feel like ever they ever put pressure on me or I had to live a certain standard, you know, that's good. I feel like it was just. What did you fight with your siblings chill. about the most? Or what do you still fight with your siblings about the most? 
I don't think I've ever gotten in a fight with my brother besides him like picking on me when I was little, little. <laughs> <laughs> so well, that's, that's cool. been easy. Yeah. And then Chelsea, I don't feel like we've really ever had fights. I mean, sometimes we'll say our opinions to each other or like, but we've never, I don't think we've really ever gotten in a fight. We need to have Chelsea on this podcast because I'm sure if there <laughs> has been one, she would know better than me. I just feel like a lot of stuff I can't remember. And then I'll be talking to my sister after she listened to the podcast. And she's like, there's all these things you could have talked about. So I'm like, next time I should probably like look over some notes and maybe ask her some stuff. Cause she has like yeah. really good stories. And I just was so young that I just feel like all I just feel like I remember a lot is just gymnastics. Like there's just so much in like from the Marta Caroli era, I just feel like half of it's just blocked out and I'm like I don't even know I just I can't remember stuff and then even like talking to Simone sometimes I'm like like when I came back into gymnastics and we would all be like it would be with each other in person at camps or you know at worlds olympics whatever and she always like remembered the funniest stories and I'm like I just don't remember any of that like I just feel like it's kind of like going through trauma or something you know like you just <laughs> you block it out I don't like I just don't remember a lot of things until she started talking about it and then I'm like oh I remember like oh man I wish like I would have kept a journal or something and wrote all that stuff down because I just I have a bad memory I just don't remember stuff until someone brings it up anyway my sister's my sister Chelsea probably has a lot of good stories to share about our family but I just I was so young at the time I don't really remember a lot she was older so is there anything now that you fight with your siblings about or you don't get along about? I don't feel like there is. Is there? Um, I mean, not necessarily. I know, but do you think, I'm like trying to think, I don't. So while you're thinking, for me, I mean, growing up, obviously, like I fought with my brother a lot. And then with my sisters, the only times I remember like really being mad at them. I know, I'm curious. Was I'm when like, I want to <laughs> know this stuff. Come on, spit it out. <laughs> Jeez, Okay. It was when, like, both my sisters did this really annoying thing where, like, if I had a disagreement with my mom or my dad, they would, like, jump in and, like, team up. Like, like, like yeah, Jonas, listen to mom. You, like, yeah, sort of thing. Me. And I, it would make me want to scream. I could totally see that, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that was, that was the worst. Um, or, like, if I was, if I, like, had a disagreement with anyone, I feel like I would just get, like, teamed up on my the thing that like makes me laugh the most is Jonas's sister loves to bake and cook and so when she's in the kitchen I feel like she gets very stressed and very overwhelmed <laughs> and if you like come in there and move something or you're in the way or like you're not supposed to be in there she will snip at you <laughs> and it's funny because I'll see her snip at your mom sometimes and I'm like whoa like <laughs> it's getting heated and your mom just takes it and I'm like well that's pretty good your mom's just like okay <laughs> like Ariel's just doing her thing, and I'm like, man, someone needs to tell her no so she doesn't do that anymore. Kind of funny. <laughs> I don't know. I'm like, yeah, I mean, I don't. I've never run into that personally because you know, I don't. I don't cook at home. Yeah, correct me. Up. The only thing that I, as far as like conflict goes, I mean, it's not like I get along with all my siblings just fine. But there's two big things. So one is politics. We we have. I have different political views from my sisters and my mom. But the problem is, is that they don't like talking about it. And so it's like, there's a lot of tension. So here's an example. I have some friends who have like opposing political views from me, mm -hmm. which I do not care. Right. Like, I don't think it's a big deal at all. Some people think it's a big deal. If people don't agree with you, mm -hmm. I don't care. There's so many different beliefs. But, like, I can have healthy conversations and yeah. discussions and even, like, sort of debates, but not really a debate, but just, like, you know, asking questions, figuring out. And I think that's great. But my mom and sisters are so, like, sensitive to that. I feel like I feel like it'd be a lot healthier if they were a little more open so we could at least talk. So I'd be like, hey, you know, why do you think this? Right. Why I, do you, I, I, yeah, you same, know? but it's but like you can't even go there. Yeah, because yeah. you've been there. When, when I even try to bring it up, they're just like, nah, nah, nah. Like, nope, you can't. So... Well, it's kind of interesting, too, because I, same thing, like, I just want to know what they think of stuff or right. their opinions. Like, and it's I'm like, just I, curious, and I, I feel like I can't, like I can't, even, yeah, I can't yeah. even ask. 
But so that's I mean, one I thing. get it because it, it, you know, politics do cause problems, which sucks. But, like, I don't always care that much. As long as, like, you let me believe what I want to believe, I'm fine talking about it instead of, like, I just don't like when people try to change your opinion in your mind. Like, no, it has to, uh, like, I just like being able to, like, say my thing and, like, kind of what I think about it and, like, hearing what mm-hmm. they have to say about it and, like, having a discussion, like, I don't need to sit there and be like, no, you, you need to change it. You need to, uh, you know, like, yeah, I just like, it's interesting. Like, I just want to know like their thoughts, you know, yeah, it I know is interesting. Like, like what people think about different things. And a good example how they view it. is my cousin, Jake, he and I are pretty close and we've been friends you know, ever since we were really little. He and I don't see eye to eye on a lot of things. Like we have different views on like politics, religion, um, like drugs, just stuff like that. But we have great conversations about it. And I wish that I could have that same sort of, you know, discourse with people in my family. So, I don't know, maybe one day. But <laughs> that's probably, like, the only thing. Maybe the other your thing, mom will listen to this and then she'll be like, okay, let's have a discussion. <laughs> um, the other thing, the only other thing, and it's it's not that big of a deal, but, like, nutrition. Sometimes in the past, not like we've ever argued, but, like, kind of, like, butted heads, like, in the family. Because... So here's an example. So my sister's... I don't, like, I don't know where you're going with this. Okay, my sister's vegetarian. Mm. And mm. This, mm-hmm. my, my brother made this comment once where he was like... He said that he eats extra meat to make up for her being a vegetarian. <laughs> yeah. Which was just a joke, but it's just, just stuff like that. Or like, I don't know, she's in med school, so obviously she knows a lot. But I... It's my older sister, I mean... I don't know, but I do a lot of research in my own biohacking, mm-hmm. right? Like I'm very, I've the, dove you're, deep you're, into yeah, like you're very intelligent. health you know, and nutrition You know stuff. a lot about stuff. I yeah, and like, like there's just, there's just a lot of things that people can't agree on. Um, Even if you're not a doctor, I still feel like you're very knowledgeable or, in, you know, yeah. in school. But, but that's never been like, like a topic of, it's like, it's not conflict. It's just, mm-hmm. that's just one thing where we just have appeal, like, opposing yeah. viewpoints. Yeah. Yeah, I still remember when I did the carnivore diet, my aunt, she, she was, I remember I, I told her about it because I was doing the carnivore diet and she was like visiting our house and she looked at me like I was the dumbest person in the world. And Who, I'm like, Maddie? No, my aunt. Oh. It was one of my aunts. Oh, I don't remember. And I'm so. like, I'm like, okay, hold on. Cause I had to back myself up. I'm like, listen here. And I told her, I'm like, I'm getting every single vitamin, mineral, nutrient that I need, and all I'm eating is meat, salt, and water. And you want to know what the cool I'm thing like, is? Well, is, can I finish? Okay, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Okay, you can go. I, know no, you're gonna, you I was just going to say the cool thing is is it did so much for you, which was awesome. Uh, well, I mentioned that too. I know. I'm I know like, I'm like, like listen, I have, I have a whoop, and I have one of those fitness scales. I'm tracking like eight different health metrics. Every single one of them has improved since I've done only meat. I'm like, also, I want you to name... Name one, like, essential uh, vitamin, mineral, or, like, nutrient that is in vegetables that I can't get from meat or, like, animal-based. Because there is nothing, right? Like, you can get – there's there's stuff in meat that you can't get from plants, but there's nothing in plants that you can't get from meat. Anyways, I, I explained all this to her, and I'm like, hey, I have no problem with people being vegan, like – I'm just saying, I don't want you to think that Why I'm stupid. Why are people vegan? They just don't want to eat animals? They just don't want to eat meat. I don't know for um, if it your, your beliefs or some people don't think that meat's healthy. Um, a lot of reasons. I just love meat. Which, I mean, I don't blame <laughs> I you. It. But like. Yeah. I've always, I don't know. I just never understood all that stuff. I'm like, eh. Food is food. God gave us animals to eat food. I don't know. I just eat what I eat and what I feel like. I'm like, I don't care about all that stuff. <laughs> I so love food. To finish off, what are some ways, Michaela, that you would recommend people to better your relationship with siblings as an adult? What would you say? I mean, just kind of having a close relationship with my sister Katie and even just talking from my brother time to time, I think really building those relationships. And I think like the biggest thing is like don't hold grudges. Like, I've seen so many times in families where they're just ripped apart over something so stupid. Mm -hmm. Like, it's just so stupid. And it's like, why do you need to hold a grudge over that? Like, get over it. 
things happen. People say things like I've heard my siblings say things behind each other's backs before. It's like, think like you're going to get mad at people. You're not going to agree. You're not going to like everything that everybody else likes. So I think like, yeah, if you're going to be mad about something, something happened, be mad for a couple days, move on, keep, keep a good relationship. Like the best thing is when you're with your whole family, especially during the holidays and you're just, you have so much fun and to Mm -hmm. have those relationships and, just the experiences you have and the growth from it is just, it's incredible. So I just say like, don't ever hold grudges, always have better communication. Like I need to talk to my brother more for sure. Cause every time we see them, he's hilarious. They're so fun. His kids are really fun. His wife and my brother are like the biggest jokesters. Like every time they're on the phone, like if we do like a three-way call with my mom and he's on and I'm on, or if I'm in Arizona on a two-way call with them, it's just, it's hilarious. You're constantly getting jokes. It, it's just so fun to be around him. Um, and I just wish I had more of a relationship with him and talk to him more. I'm just really, I think it's because it's a brother, you know, like you said, like mm-hmm. my sister, it's just easy. We have things to relate to. I can talk about whatever I need to. And I feel like with my brother, it's just not the same in that way. But yeah, good communication. Don't hold grudges. And I don't know, to always love each other because you're always happier when you're nice and you love each other and you're having fun. <laughs> I don't know. I, I love, think that's good. I love my family. Yeah. We have our moments like every <laughs> family does, but I know that we all love each other deep down and we all are rooting for each other and wanting the best. So. I would agree, honestly, with your whole list. The only thing I would add would be um, like show interest in their life. You know, mm-hmm. like stay up to date on what they're doing and spend time together, quality time. You know, Yeah, your out. family does that a lot, I feel like. Mm-hmm. Every time we go over to Jonas's house, okay, everyone, what's new? What have you been up to? <laughs> I'm like, I don't really do, I mean, I do, I do that with my family. I mean, we're not in Arizona, so I don't get to see them that often. But even just living here with Jonas's family, you guys do, you guys do that. That's like, I feel like a big thing you do is, okay, update what's new and showing interest or wanting to be a part of it or do it with them or we should go do that next time or Mm -hmm. me I'm like "Eh." (laughs) Uh, that's cool (laughs) but hiking for one hate hiking and that's your family loves being (laughs) adventurous I don't know know why you hate it I don't know I like camping I do not like hiking that much anyway I think those are the things to kind of focus on at least that work for me everyone's different but I think those are the important things. I agree. That's all we got for you guys today. The assumption is if you could have only one child, you would consider adoption. No. What? I would. Wait, if I could only have one child? No. If you only had one child. Oh, would you consider adoption? Yeah. (laughs) Sorry, I thought if you could only have one child. Would you consider oh, adoption? No. I'm like, well, I'd probably so like, want my like, own. Like if this kid that we're about to have, if this, if this baby is our only one that we can have naturally. Oh, yeah, then I'd consider adoption. Okay, I think yeah. that'd be so fun. Me too. Well, that was an easy one. I mean, I, I could still see that maybe down in the road, like after the three, maybe adopting one at some point. I don't know. It'd be fun. Sorry. That's four kids. That's a lot. Well. If we don't have a boy, <laughs> then you wanted four or five or to keep going. That's true. So, I guess, well, I guess we'll cross that road when we get there. I think it would be so fun. There's so many kids that need a good life, and I'd love to give them that. We'll see. That's that true. was a good assumption. I like that. That was cute. Yeah, sorry. Ru- sorry. <laughs> that sounded really rude. No, you're like, you're uh, <laughs> no, I, I've always thought about adoption would be kind of cool so anyway thanks everybody for tuning in those are our thoughts on siblings and sibling relationships i'm sure you guys have a lot yeah (laughs) similarities hope you learned something hope you enjoyed the stories and next week is actually our last episode of season one of agree to disagree i know it's so sad which is crazy and then we're going to take a little break um not sure how oh. long, but we're going to be traveling a lot in the summer. Yeah. 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 And the baby's coming. But mm-hmm. um, I did post something on Instagram, but 
if you guys have anything that you want us to talk about, talk about our opinions on that seem really interesting, as long as it's not, you know, politics and <laughs> all the other things, because we don't need to, we don't need to dive into that. That's just not even, that's a waste of time anyway. But seriously, if you guys come up with anything, I know we've talked about a lot of stuff on here, but if something hits you, hits your brain in the next week, please comment down below so we can talk about stuff because it's our last one and we want to make it good for you guys. So mm -hmm. hopefully there'll be a season two <laughs> anyway. So thank you guys so much. We'll catch you next week. See ya.